Greetings and welcome to another edition of The Great Goddess. Praise be to Goddess. Praise be to Goddess. Well, uh, tomorrow is Day of Her Grace when we're supposed to uh, forgive people who are close to us, make peace with our love, and pray to Goddess for forgiveness, and uh, forgive others, and extend our forgiveness to others. And that's tomorrow. Um, the, it'll be the last day of the day of the Festival of the Mother. The Festival of the Mother is coming to a close for another year. It's very sad. But uh, some people, some among us, will never see another Festival of the Mother. Um, which is also sad. Uh, they'll never get to know the, uh, the joy of the Festival of the Mother. Some people will never know that joy, although they'll be in Goddess's presence, so they'll know, they'll get to know Goddess. But, uh, I've been feeling kind of sick. My, uh, my lungs hurt. I don't have any mucus. I don't have any coughing. I don't have any congestion, just pain. It's horrible pain in my my whole chest area. My lungs hurt. And I don't know why. It could be the beginning of coronavirus. I may have caught it on a recent trip to the grocery store. I uh I had to use a payphone and then I had to take a cab home. And I may have caught coronavirus then. Who knows? I could have coronavirus. It's very serious. But I was thinking today, I couldn't help thinking, what is the full, fullest extent of this coronavirus crisis? And what does it mean? Now first, before I tell you anything else, I want to tell you about vitamin D. A re researchers have now found that there is a strong correlation between vitamin D deficiency and cytokine storm. So they may have actually identified the nutrient which in it for a deficit or for lack of that nutrient causes a cytokine storm. This might be the cause of cytokine storms is vitamin D deficiency. We've had a long winter. Nobody's had exposure to the sun. People don't eat fish or anything else with vitamin D in it. People are deficient in vitamin D. So that could be making the coronavirus crisis worse because of the vitamin D status of millions of people. I recommend strongly that you take a vitamin D. Uh, if you think D3 is more effective, take D3. You have my permission to take it, even though it comes from an animal. That's fine. Go ahead and take D3. Because it's to save your life and I'm definitely going to take some some vitamin D I may take the D2 but uh, I'm gonna take vitamin D to try to strengthen my immune system because this is this is serious this is really serious uh, isn't it a miracle that we found out what causes the cytokine storms is vitamin D it's a lack of vitamin D you need to take vitamin D folks uh, no ifs, ands, or buts about it to prevent a cytokine storm. Take vitamin D. Now, you're, you're wondering to yourself, what is the cause of all this horror? What caused this? Well, it may not have been a meat market after all. That was the early report from China was that it came from a meat market. But it may be that it escaped from a laboratory. And they have many labs in China, but there is a laboratory right in Wuhan, China. Okay, in Wuhan, there is a laboratory of infectious diseases 
or they study infectious diseases, all sorts of different types of infectious diseases, and it may have escaped that from the lab. So that's, and, and there was a researcher that they, that they knew that had been researching coronaviruses. There's many coronaviruses. They've been re researching coronaviruses for years and uh, experimenting with bat viruses. So we know that it well could have come from a laboratory. They went deep underground into a cave, brought out bats, drew their blood or took some sort of tissue sample, ex uh, uh, collected coronavirus and infected new cells with it. And then it spread to the human population and escaped from the laboratory. That's how coronavirus may have spread. And we'll never know for sure. It still could have been the meat market, but it's more likely to be this laboratory that was in Wuhan. And it was a perfect storm. It was a perfect storm of events because at the same time that the coronavirus was escaping from this laboratory, way back, way before January, maybe in November, the Trump administration, and Trump specifically, this came right from the top. It was his decision. Trump basically dismissed, canceled our our pandemic response. Uh, our he canceled our pandemic response program. He canceled the program that was for a for a pandemic response. And he fired the whole Chinese team. There was a team of Americans. Believe it or not, they're like heroes, right? There was a team of experts and, and uh, people, diplomats and so on, working in China that were on the pandemic response team. We actually, from the Obama era, we actually had a pandemic response team in China. So if there was ever an outbreak there, they could launch an immediate response and nip it in the bud before it became a major pandemic. He fired them all. And this was back in November. He fired the whole team and he canceled pandemic response. Uh, okay, okay, can the pandemic response program all throughout the world. So something was bound to happen. Something was bound to occur. He, it just wasn't important to him. He made a budget cut so he could give a, another tax break to his cronies. Now I would like to tell you a little bit more about the consequences of these, of these human actions and what the consequences will be for America specifically, but all throughout the world. You may be wondering now, how many people are going to catch coronavirus? Well, I'll tell you who, how many people are going to catch it. We're all going to catch it, okay? We are all going to catch it. The only question is, when and how long will it take for everyone to catch it? Well, I could tell you right now how long it's going to take for everyone to catch it. Within a year's time, within a year's time or sooner, maybe it'll be, 11 months and one day. Within a year's time, everyone in America will have caught coronavirus. And that is if we stay under quarantine, all right? That's if, if the stay-at-home orders all stay in place, we all stay home, and nobody goes out. But you know that that's not going to fly with Trump or his cronies or with uh, Republicans or conservatives. So what's going to happen when we go back to business as usual? All right, we're going to go back to business as usual. Here's the scenario. Everyone in America will have caught coronavirus within four months time, four months time, with social distancing and precautions. And everyone in America will have caught it within two months time with no precautions. If we just go back completely to business as usual, practice no precautions, 
two months time. See what these jerks these people are wiping their noses on people's shirts and shooting people because they're mad. They're jerks, right? Because we know that if we if we did things their way and didn't make them wear masks, didn't make them keep their keep keep their distance, didn't make them behave. That within and everyone acted like that within two months' time, everyone in America will have had will have caught coronavirus. And within two months, and within four months, even if everyone behaves them, themselves the way they're behaving themselves now or have been for the past month, even if everyone behaves themselves, it'll take four months. And if we st have the stay at home orders all stay in place, and, the, and it will ruin the economy, the economy will be completely devastated. But within a year's time, everyone will have caught coronavirus. So, so uh, what about the stock market? What is the situation with the economy? Well, since mid-February, as of today, the stock market has lost 18% of its total value, which is a depression. It's not as bad as the Great Depression, but it's a major depression. Uh, but it has partially recovered its value, like in... In uh, mid-March, it took a sharp spike downward. It took a sharp spike downward and lost uh, over 30% of its value. Maybe, maybe it was more than 30%. But it's recovered. But there will be new, new outbreaks, new resurgences, and uh, new panics. And the stock market is going to be in for a bumpy ride until we find a vaccine. What about a vaccine? What are the considerations for a vaccine? Well, a vaccine, the, in, in good years, the flu vaccine is 60% effective. In bad years, the flu vaccine is only 40% effective. And this is in the same family as flu. It's very similar to flu. So it could be only 40 to 60% effective. Um, the people who survive the initial wave will be very hardy people. They'll be very strong people. And they'll have some immunity. But even then, there will keep on being deaths year after year after year. Every, uh, you know, you have, you've known from your own experience that you've had flu, the flu worse in some years than others. Some years it's been all right. Other years it's been really severe. And that's when you caught it, despite having had a flu vaccine, that you got a flu vaccine and you still caught it. So you know it can be severe. Like I, I survived, I survived, uh, the, uh, the outbreak of uh, the, the swine flu. I believe it was called swine flu. Uh, I survived that. But this is much more serious. This is 30 times more lethal than the flu. And maybe even greater because basing 30 times more lethal on early projections. And it's turned out to be much more lethal than the flu. So what is the death rate from coronavirus? Well, it is between 5.9% or almost 6%, 5.9% and 12.5%. And so that is anywhere from one out of 17 people to one out of eight people who's infected dies of coronavirus. Went from one out of 17 to one out of eight. Just in that range. And so that's how lethal it is. And how many people are going to die of this ultimately? Well, there's complications. And I have, I have for you, um, have for you 
information. Okay, approximately one out of 17 to one out of eight people will die initially and many more of lack of dialysis machines, number one, lack of uh, ventilators, number two, or CPAP, and a lack of open heart surgeons for everybody. And don't forget organ transplants. There's still going to be uh, the cases of organ organ failure could double or triple, and they've already cu cut cut the number of transplants they're willing to do by sixty percent. So there could there could be there could be upwards of uh, and they do one hundred fifty thousand transplants a year. So there could be upwards of uh, let's say. Uh, 225,000 to 300,000 extra deaths just from organ failures and a lack of trans transplantation. Now, there will be, there will be within, within either four months time if with with precautions and going back to business as usual or one year's time staying at home. We will have 19,400,000 to, to 41,000,000, uh, 41,025,000 deaths. Okay, so between 19.4 and 41 million deaths. Uh, by next April, under quarantine, by September, with business as usual, but practicing social distancing, and by July, with no precautions. And what about the complications? How many deaths will there be from, be from complications? Okay, so there will be between... 41,025,000 to 49,230,000 more deaths from kidney failure. And there will be between, there will be approximately, approximately, these are all approximations, we don't know how many yet, 7,876,800 more will die of heart complications. They'll just drop dead of a heart attack or an arrhythmia. Uh, more people will die from now on due to ventilator shortage. There will also be cases of organ failure, although it may be rare people waiting for organ transplants will pre-increase. Total potential deaths within one and a half to two years time within one and a half to two years time there will be 98,130 oh, okay 98 million 98 million 131,800 deaths approximately so approx there will be approximately 98 million deaths or more or more if you take into account organ failure later complications and uh, people waiting for organ failure, people uh, complications, and people who, who die of a shortage of ventilators. That'll bump it up a little bit. So it could be as high as 100 million deaths. Now, 98 million is a lot of people. How many is that? That's 29.9% of the population or approximately three out of 10 people. And I'm not joking or kidding around with you when I say that everyone in America will know someone who died of coronavirus. There's no way. There's no way that you can go, uh, go along and not know someone who died of coronavirus. And coronavirus is the gift that keeps on giving. It just keeps killing year after year after year. It's as infectious as the flu. It's as infectious as the flu. And and it, they may not be able to find a perfect vaccine like they did for polio. 
and it just keeps killing year after year. In 10 years time, in 10 years time, half of America could be dead. So say goodbye to your loved ones now because within one and a half to two years time, three out of 10 people will have died. And Trump wasn't joking around or kidding with his followers when he said there will be a lot of deaths, a lot of deaths. His quote, I'm quoting him now, he, there will be a lot of deaths, a lot of deaths, a lot of deaths. He said it. He was briefed on it. They don't want people to panic. They don't want people to panic. They don't want people giving each other coronavirus. They don't want people rioting in the streets. They don't want people grabbing toilet paper and bread and hiding in a bunker. They don't want people going nuts, okay? They don't want, they don't want social chaos and total disorder. But that's how many people could die, three out of 10, within one and a half to two years time. And within, within four months to a year, within four months to a year, uh, there will be, oh, let's say, uh, three out of 20 people will have died. Three out of 20, which is approximately one in six. So it's going to be very, very bad. It's going to be a lot of carnage, uh, a lot of death. Everyone should be informed now how much death there will be. There won't be enough dialysis machines. Anyone who has kidney disease now is really, really messed over. Okay, they're really getting messed over because there's going to be so many people dying without, without who need dialysis. And there's going to be so many people needing organ transplants and there, and there won't be enough organs and they, they're cutting they're, they've already cut the number of organ transplants by 40% now. Just imagine how bad it'll be when everyone has been infected with coronavirus. And then, and then uh, they will, they will uh, stop doing organ transplants altogether. So anyone who's on an organ, trans, organ donor transplant list, it's going to be pretty sad. You even if you even if you sign up for the registry and you check the box like they always say on TV to check the box um nobody will be able to get your organs because they'll refuse to do the surgery uh the ventilators uh they found out ventilators aren't good for people with coronavirus so they've stopped putting people on ventilators unless they really really need it but the lack of ventilators in the future will mean that more people will die who need a ventilator for whatever reason. Even if they don't have coronavirus, they won't be able to get a ventilator. Um, there's, it, there won't be sh oxygen supply shortages because they already use oxygen for other purposes. So there will be enough oxygen. So that's one bright spot. And there will be enough CPAP machines. They've made CPAP machines by the millions. And practically everyone in America owns a CPAP machine. I own a CPAP machine. My mom's got a CPAP machine. And um, so it'll be easy to get a CPAP machine in case you need that. Although CPAP could keep reinfecting you with, with coronavirus again and again unless you get a, a disin disinfector. You know those disinfectors they saw on TV where you put your mask inside and close the lid and wait like 20 minutes or so and it disinfects your whole machine? You have to get one of those if you have a CPAP and you get coronavirus because it'll keep reinfecting you again and again with the coronavirus. Now here's another thing to keep in mind. Coronavirus mutates. Okay. So every single year it's like having a new coronavirus. All right. Every single year, it's like having a new coronavirus and the, the vaccine might only be 40 to 60% effective, but people will develop a partial immunity to it. They'll be stronger people, uh, younger people will, sur will survive 
and the population will be more resistant, but it'll keep killing year after year. Like if it kills 30 times more people than die of the flu, and the flu kills anywhere from 10,000 to 20,000 people per year, then it will kill approximately 300,000 to 600,000 people every year. So within, so within another, within another eight to eight and a half years, oh, how many pe people is that? Let's see. Uh, that's 2,400,000 to 2,400,000 to 2,400,000 and this was just based on preliminary stuff out of China and the Chinese lied. So 2,400,000 to uh, um, 2,400,000 uh, to 5,000,000 5, 5 extra deaths after the initial wave of coronavirus is over. So there, there's going to be a lot of deaths. Uh, there's going to be famous people dying. There's going to be, everyone's going to know someone who died. And there will be a, a shortage of skilled labor. There will be a shortage of, of uh, care workers, of health care workers. If you plan on going into health care, uh, you know, maybe you're afraid of coronavirus and catching it. But healthcare workers are really needed. So if you decide to go into that, you're brave and I applaud you, but there's going to be a shortage, so you're going to be needed. There will be demand for you. Uh, there, there, it's going to be, there's going to be shortages. Okay, there's going to be shortages of everything, needles, masks, ventilators, maybe oxygen, maybe oxygen, maybe CPAPs. And uh, right now, there's a huge shortage of dialysis machines. There just aren't enough to go around. And it's going to become a situation where no one can get dialysis. So there's going to be a lot of death. It's not going to be pretty. People will be fighting with each other over supplies. People will be fighting in the streets. It'll be mass chaos in just a few months. And Trump wants everything to go back to business as usual. Well, it's going to be mass chaos once, once the, the virus begins really spreading in earnest. Right now, a million people have, over a million people have this three point, oh, it's 1.38 million people have it. It's just going to keep on spreading, okay? So it's only a matter of time. We have either two months or four months or 12 months before we've all caught it. And I might already have it. I might already have it. Uh, took a cab ride, wasn't careful, I may have it now. So I'll say goodbye to you all now, just in case I can never make another video again. Goodbye, everyone. Uh, say goodbye. Say, this this uh, day of her grace, say goodbye. Say goodbye to your loved ones. Say goodbye to older adults. Uh, say goodbye to the immunocompromised. Say goodbye to your loved ones. Say it just... Tell them you love them right now. Call them on the phone. Say goodbye. And uh, do what you have to do. Do what you can. I'm Sarah Jane Alpha Wolf signing off. Uh, this, is, this is the saddest video I've ever had to do to tell you that 3 in 10 people are going to die and that Within a decade, half of America could be, could be dead, but somebody had to tell you, somebody had to warn you what, what's ahead 
and what's next for you and your loved ones and for your future.